In this episode, we make a spin transition without any paid plugins. So at the time of recording this, we currently cannot make this transition solely in DaVinci Resolve. So we'll need to use another piece of free software by Blackmagic. What we're gonna be using is DaVinci Resolve, but we're also gonna be using a piece of software called Fusion. We're gonna go onto their website and go to products and then go to where they have DaVinci Resolve and Fusion 9, learn more, and then you can download it from here. We're gonna be using everything from the free version in this transition. So you can download that quick. Once you have it downloaded, you need to make your timeline in DaVinci Resolve. So I'm gonna take this clip and we're going to transition with this clip. I'll get rid of both of these audio tracks quick. And it's just gonna go from this girl to this girl. I would recommend before you uh, do the transition to add whatever color effects you wanna add quick. Okay, so now I have my two color grades. And then next we're going to see where exactly we wanna add these transitions in. So once she looks away, we'll add this cut. So let's say there. We'll just cut this and get rid of that. And then what we need to do is, we're, for this situation, let's do a six frame transition. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six. And we will overlap this. And then all we're gonna do is, we're just gonna come uh, after a little bit. And we're just going to cut this here. And we'll just drop that guy down and then cut over here just so that we have a little bit of extra on both sides. And then we're gonna highlight both clips. And we're gonna right click, new Fusion Connect clip. We're gonna click that, leave everything default and make sure you have open Fusion Clip Connect. Connect clip, geez. Uh, just have that, in, have that checked and then hit create. And then once it creates the file, then it will automatically start up Fusion. Now it has started up Fusion, and if we, down here is our timeline. If we play through here, we have both of our shots, okay? So now we need to add in all of the nodes to make this transition. Just a quick rundown, down here there's two little dots that's just showing which uh, monitor it's in, which preview monitor. So I just wanna see what, what shot that is, what shot that is. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this shot and I only want to do a 180 here. You could do a 360, but I would recommend uh, having it more than six frames, just a couple more. But because it's only six frames, that's very quick. I don't want to spin it so fast because then it's just going to be a blurry mess and it's going to go way too quick to get to have it look uh, good. So because I only want it to spin halfway, what I want to do with this clip is I want to um, flip it upside down and then when one flips, the other one is going to get flipped right side up. So first I need to uh, take this shot and I need to flip it upside down. So I'm going to add a transform node to this. So all I'm going to do is hit shift and enter and then put in transform. And then we have our transform node here. We're just going to come out of our transform node into our transform. And we'll just delete this guy and bring this guy into here. And now we have our, it goes from here to our transform node and then into our merge node. So what we're gonna do on this transform node is we're just going to take this and spin it 180. So it's upside down, okay? So now when it goes through, she's upside down. Now what I can do is after our merge, because now they're gonna be both merged together, I can hit shift spacebar again and get another transform. And then out of the merge, I'm gonna go into the transform node and then out of the transform node, I'm gonna go into the fusion clip. The fusion clip, this node is going to be always our last node in whatever we end up making in our node tree because this is going to be the node that then gets pushed to DaVinci. So now I'm going to come over to our timeline 
and we can see where our overlap is. And we're going to start it here and then end it here. What I'm gonna do now is go here and we are currently on our transform two node, so it's over here. And we're going to click on the angle, double click on this angle, this little bar right here, and that's where you'll start adding your keyframes in. So we're gonna start off at zero. And then when it gets to here, we're gonna put in here 180, because that's all we want it to do. We want it to do a 180. So as it switches, it's going to right side up. Now, currently, we can't see the other shot in here. It's just like a hard flip between the two. So we need to uh, come back over to our flow. And in our merge, so we have this ability to blend from one shot to the other. So what we're going to do is we start out on this shot of the girl walking and then we're gonna come to this shot. So in our merge layer, gonna go back over to timeline so we can see where these both start. We're gonna start here and we're going to have our, we're gonna enable blend and bring it over to our the shot that we started at and then come to the other end and then just put a one in here. And then what's going to happen is throughout this, it's going to transform from the one shot to the other shot. Okay, so now we have that. Now, we're ha we have this situation where on this side and this side of the frame, there isn't anything there. So we need to add to that. And this frame is the frame that we have it spinning, or this node is the frame that we have it spinning on. So we're just simply going to come to edges and click on mirror and then it's gonna mirror the edges. So as it spins, it's just mirroring them. So now we fix that problem. So let's play this through. Okay, it's good so far. So we need to add one other thing in here is the effect of it spinning, right? Um, but if we look at this, it's spinning like counterclockwise. I want it to spin clockwise. So easy fix. We'll just come into where our node was that we had the 180 and all you have to do in here if you want it to spin the other way you just put a negative 180 in here and now it'll spin and well it's going to spin clockwise okay so i want it to spin clockwise i like it spinning clockwise better all right so now i need to add in effect where it's going to look like it's like it has that spin like the blur of it spinning so you can, I, you can search it, but let's say you don't know what that effect is that you wanna use. You're not gonna know what to search for. The other way you can get your nodes is you, if you right click, add tool, go into blurs and hmm, which one do I want? I want directional blur. So we'll add that one in, but now we have to just connect our node up. So we'll just connect our node here and then our output is this little red and we'll come over to the fusion clip. We'll delete that one quick and come over to the fusion clip. So now we have our directional blur in here, but obviously we don't see anything. We need to add the amount of blur that we're going to have in, in here. So if we look, we're starting out at nothing. So the two, the two things that we have is angle and length. First we wanna, uh, for our type, we wanna do radial because we're spinning in a circle. And then our length and our angle. So we first start here. And let's just first start with the length and we are going to, as we progress, so like let's say in the middle here, we want to add a bunch of uh, length here. So let's see how that looks. Okay, at the end we have to add, we have to make this zero. Cause that's kind of difficult to look at. Okay, so let's see how it's looking so far. Okay, it's not, it's not that intense. So let's come back to our middle point where we have this. Let's add a little bit of angle in here. So now it looks like it's like it has a bunch of spin, but that might be a bit much. So we could tone that down. So let's say like that. That looks good, right? Let's play this and see how this looks. Uh, but we need to add, <laughs> we need to make these into keyframes. So we're gonna keyframe because we already had the value there. We're just gonna keyframe that that uh, value and then at this side we're going to turn this to zero and also on this side we're going to turn this to zero 
So now let's play this and see how it looks. It looks okay, but I think that what I want to do is we're gonna come into our spline tool and this is gonna be where we can see all of our keyframes. So currently directional blur that's here, we'll just enable these keyframes. And if you hold control, you can zoom in to see your keyframes. What I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a point here and I'm gonna move this up to our value and then another point over here and move our value up for there. Just so we have um, that spin effect getting added to a bit more of it. The only thing that's gonna add more in the middle is um, the length of the blur. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. What the other thing that we could do is we could highlight all of our keyframes and hit F and it'll smooth them out. Okay, but the, if you, I don't know if you've noticed this so far is currently this is looking blurry, but it's looking like there's a lot of like, uh, there's hard edges. So we need to smooth out those hard edges. That's gonna be the next thing. So come back over to flow. And then what we're gonna look for now is just blur. We're gonna add blur in. And then uh, we just have to add in a, where our blur is gonna be. So we're gonna start off at zero. So we'll have our keyframe there. And then we can just turn this up just a little bit. So let's say there looks pretty good, right? So what was this? 3.8. We'll add a note or a keyframe there, 3.8, and then we'll bring this one down to zero. So now we have a much better looking blur, right? That's looking pretty good. So like, let's say we want to just keep this, right? That's exactly what we want. All we have to do now is just come down here and click render, and leave everything as default and then start render. And it'll go through and it'll render out the project. And then once it renders out the project, it's going to then push it to DaVinci. So now we just click okay and we can just minimize this. And now in here, we should see our effect. So if we just full screen this and watch, and there's our effect. If when you did the render, if it didn't show up in DaVinci, you could just simply click here or click up here, wherever your clip is, right click on it, go to uh, Fusion Connect, and then just click refresh and it'll refresh it. So if you had uh, caching on, you might, when you play it, it might only play the, the cached uh, clip. And then once you hit refresh, then it'll refresh to the, the updated clip. And that's pretty much all, all there is to it. Um, if you want it to, you know, let's say change the direction, I showed you how to do that. Or if you wanted it to be go 360, you could do that, but I would just say make it more than six frames, maybe like eight or nine frames long. Um, because once once you start to spin it like really quick, it's really hard to, to have that feel of it um, spinning. So all the, what I would add to this now is I would just add um, maybe like a sound effect, obviously an audio track to, to, um, to accompany this. But that's pretty much how you do the, the spin in DaVinci without any plugins. And if you have the time, I would say look into Fusion. It is a very powerful tool. Now that I introduced it on my YouTube channel, I'll uh, definitely have a lot more. Before I was just trying to do just DaVinci Resolve stuff, but now um, that I had requests to do some effects that you can't currently do in DaVinci without uh, plugins, um, I'll, I'll start to now show more fusion stuff. So look on my channel for, for a lot more of that. Um, with that being said, let me know down in the comments what your thoughts are on this one. And yeah, that's, that's about it. My name's JR and I'll see you in the next one.